What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here, and I'm joined with the Mars Man crew to give our official review of Pal World, or other known as Pokemon Light, or I guess Digimon, or Arc, or whatever game you want to call it. We got Pal World on today, and in this video, we're going to give our good, bad, discuss whether or not Pal World is a Pokemon ripoff, and then give our final verdicts and whether you should buy this now, later, or not at all. So let's start off with the good. And when I think about Pal World, to be honest with you, this is probably the most fun I've had on the cheapest and low brand game I've I've seen in a long time, where the game itself is pretty simple. You go out and you go collect pals, and then you can get those pals to go do whatever you want them to do, whether it is to build up your settlement. I've actually seen people progress so far in the game that you can straight up build factories and create assembly lines. I've seen <laughs> a plethora of things, whether it is funny, charming cute or just outright disgusting with the, the slave labor that they're making people do it is outrageous but one thing that is true about this game is that it creates this sense of what would happen if pokemon had guns and what would happen if pokemon was screwed up and you basically were fighting people with pokemon and killing them like and that's essentially what this game is and i think that because of how simple it was and it took some aspects from other games we've seen and actually just run with it and it was pretty simple like this game is roughly 60 percent actually complete and it still is extremely fun to play they are adding in things like a boss raids and more areas to explore and even adding more pokemon oh, sorry more pals and i feel oh. like when i think about when i think about the game itself it is so low brand level of fun that it's just like entertaining like you, normally you would play a game like this like you know like when you play like temple run for the first time and you're like damn the graphics in this game are horrible but then you just keep playing it and you just i have to beat my high score and all of a sudden you just get hooked and that's what power world really is it's like that game where you know first time i played by myself it was like i didn't know what the hell i was doing and then once i got the hang of it i was like this is actually pretty fun and then then we try again in another world we joined hockey's world and then we were just flying through gaining resources, collecting pals, and we were moving on pretty fast. Um, but it actually is, is, you know, it's a lot of fun. So when I, I want to go to Langelicill next. When you think about whether or not you find some good things about this, what is your good? Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned like, and everyone talking about is uh, Pokemon with guns is a uh, description for Power Worlds. To me, it's Ark with Pokemon. So, you know, the biggest, I think, good for this game is that the gameplay is very simple but it's very satisfying so going out finding new pals catching them and then building up and leveling up your settlement um is a very simple thing that we've seen like over and over on a bunch of different survival games but it's still so very satisfying in this one so they did a great job of providing you a lot of content for an early access game um, and I also think playing with others and giving that ability to make guilds um, is also a really fun aspect that they added with this. And again, you know, they talk about the guns. The gunplay is very simple, but still not terrible, right? The catching pals is, again, not like unbelievable, something we've never seen before, but still so very satisfying. So exploring and building up your settlement are definitely the two big goods for me. Haki, what is your good here? Yeah, so um, yeah, I have to agree with you guys. I think the pals kind of look great. At, they, you know, they pretty much look like Pokemon. Um, I think the combat between the pals is, is also pretty fun as well. Um, customizing your character before you hop in the game, you can make your character pretty much look like anything, which is always a, a fun thing to do. Uh, but I think lastly, the best thing is probably going to be the upgrade. Um, you know, it's a pretty unique uh, upgrading system. It offers you a lot to kind of grind for. That's upgrading your character as well as upgrading your settlements as well. Uh, but yeah, like you guys said, it's just a fun game to play with. And I think multiplayer is kind of its strong suit. Um, you, with console, you can play up to four people. So we kind of, you know, squatted up and, and had a great time. Lawyer guy, we haven't seen you in a little bit. What is your experience with Power World? I know that you've been building some crazy ass settlements in there. What, what's your good here? Oh, yeah, I've lost some hours on building these settlements. Um, right off the bat, the game is really easy to understand. Like, it does not take long at all for you to get, like, every important concept of the game. 
Um, I think it's actually visually really good for, for a beta. Um, you go to just different areas that are very distinct and visually really cool. Um, and the fact that you can build structures and build bases and forts in every one of these areas and they remain. Like you could build your base here, go down the, to the next island, you come back, your base is still there. Um, I also think it's awesome that you can have the creatures that you catch work on your base, do the work for you, you know? Um, so when you grind, you get, you get work done um, and it pays off in the end because now you have all these all these workers, some might call them slave labor, but these workers, uh, you know, getting a job done for you. Um, uh, I, I, this is going to sound silly, but the navigation is actually really easy in this game. They allow you to climb, like you may see this giant mountain and think, great, I got to go around this mountain, but your character can actually climb that mountain in relative ease. You might have to pause here and there because if you lose stamina, you're falling. But I found that really enjoyable. Some games you have to really take the long way, and this game makes it easy for you to really navigate the space. So I thought that was nice. Yeah, and, and you know what I think about what Pal World was doing. They kind of took a lot of what you know Park Pokemon Arcanus was looking to do, and and they just said, all right, well we're going to expand upon it, and that's kind of what we got. Um, but with the good, we need to talk about the bad. And I'll be really blunt. I mean, this is obviously an early access game, uh, and there are plenty of bugs that were sometimes like frustrating sometimes hilarious i mean i was fighting uh, i was fighting a boss like one of those mini bosses in a cave i got my uh volprix i know that's not the name that's a pokemon version of the volprix <laughs> got the firefox and was blowing fire on the enemy and then i instantly fell through the map and i just teleported back to the cave entrance where i ran through everything and i had, i was just like all right well i'm not going back through the cave again but it just shows you that just little things like that you get raided by a bunch of team rocket people i know they're not team rocket but you get invaded by these scoundrels or team rocket they show up they get stuck because they can't they can't climb up these steps and you're like well i'm just gonna destroy them in two seconds like it's just these little things that obviously it's early access i just find it really interesting or funny that early access that has these amount of bugs and people are still buying it like that's like the crazy thing to me is that People are still buying it, and it, it, obviously it's it's still fun, but it's just like there are a lot of things that are struggling uh, in the servers too. I mean, like you just think about the servers in general on uh, console is it's just broken. Um, now, granted, it's gotten a lot better since day one, but I remember just just being able to play and, and test out the game itself earlier this week, and it was just like, damn, dude, it's just been very inconsistent. But yeah, so loyal lawyer guy, what would you say is your bad for this? Um. My, my big bad is when I'm facing the bosses that half the time they're not moving, not attacking. And I'm just stabbing them with a spear, kind of kind of to go off what you were saying. Um, I feel like that's a fixable thing, um, but it is kind of frustrating when you're trying to like challenge yourself in a game and you're not really getting that because the bosses are just spazzing out. Um, I've done a lot of building, so <laughs> I do have a building issue they require you to put down certain foundations for you yeah. to even do anything. And it has to be perfect. It has to be perfectly lined up. Even if you have like an inch of some obstacle, natural obstacle that you can't destroy, uh, you can't build. And that's kind of frustrating because you don't, you don't need to do that. You could just go up to the obstacle. Um, I, again, I think that's an easy fix too. Will they pay attention to that? I'm not sure. But Yeah. And uh, hockey, what is your bad here? Yeah, I'm going to go with the the, uh, the glitches. I turned the game on uh, just before we hopped on here and, uh, you know, just to see how my world was doing. And I turned on the game and I was immediately underneath the map swimming in water and I couldn't get above the map. So I just continued to swim until I died and I had so many things on me. So I have to run, you know, a half mile or a mile back to where I was to grab all my stuff. So, again... You know, it is a preview, so you can't get too mad uh, until that exact thing happens to you. And, uh, you know, it, it'll be frustrating for a little bit, but then you'll get over it because, like you said, Mars, the game is just simple, easy, and it's just a fun game to play. So, um, you know, again, it's a preview. We're going to see, you know, the updates that come with it when the game actually comes out, if it does come out. Yeah, and uh, Langelica, what is your bad here? Yeah, I mean, you guys nailed it. This game, 
this early access sold 8 million copies in one week um, and I had over 2 million concurrent players on Steam, which is second all time um, uh, on Steam. So crazy milestones, but it's Mars Man kind of nailed in the beginning. How these massive milestones and one of the buggier games that I've played over the last year, whether it's loading, whether it's just ch textures coming in or some of the big game breaking ones where you just fall through the ground or my character couldn't even load in and I'm T-posing around my facility, right? So I, I, I'm not even like playing the game. It just pops in a generic character and it's just walking around in a T-pose like this. So, you know, there's some really wacky ones, some really funny ones and the AI, you guys kind of mentioned it, whether again, raided bosses or just standing still, not doing anything. Um, these are some, you know, ugly ones. Now, I'm not going to be too brutal on them because this is a small dev team. This is early access. Um, if this was a bigger group making this game, I'd be a little bit more harsh. But these are things that need to get done. And the console version is a lesser version than the Steam version. They need to be a little bit closer, right? So you can play 32 players in a server on Steam. You can only play four on console. And I know there's a lot of talk about that servers are free on on. Uh, on steam which is why they went with that and on consoles is a little bit harder but you know that's not something you want to hear especially when full release comes and you're selling eight million copies yeah and, and i i do agree with you i feel like that there is a definite separation between the console and, and pc player i i did play on both so i kind of have a feeling of of how they both work um pc definitely felt a lot more crisper and there were still bugs on the pc version i, I played on actually on the uh PC Game Pass, so I, it was like it was through Microsoft, but it was the PC version, and then I played on my console, so at least I can carry over my saves, which was good. I think they also did mention they're adding in cross progression as part of this yeah. new updates that are driving out, which is good. But yeah, you definitely see a, a pretty stark difference. And, and what, kind of before we get to our final verdict, there is the big question about should Pokemon sue, and the question that I always is oh, I'm always hearing is is Power World a Pokemon ripoff? And I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to say that is a complete copy and paste job because there are some distinct differences between Pokemon games and what we're getting with Pal World because nowhere in a Pokemon game have you ever been able to build anything, let alone you have to create your own unique character and, and build these settlements and, and kind of do as, as much outrageous things that you could in this game. And even, you know, traveling seems like a little more consistency but yeah, I mean, when you think about how these pals work and how you catch them and, and collect them and and bosses and all that, like that that seems like a Pokemon game. The only thing that they're missing is gyms. They don't they don't have any gyms or gym leaders. These are just boss leaders that are equivalent to Team Rocket. And I find myself difficult to separate Pal World pals and Pokemon because I feel like when I look at them, I'm like these are just like a new variant. It's like almost like a new generation of pokemon that we're that we're catching like that's what it kind of feels like to me this is like the you know the johto region is like your first ever region this is like the the bodo region it's like the it's the alternative ver universe the of johto region. the bomo re region, yeah, region and 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 it's just like a variant of it's like i'm playing in the halo show universe <laughs> versus the, the halo, silver halo yeah, the silver timeline of pokemon where it's just the same same look but just a different kind of paint job. And and granted, yes, can that be can a lot? I know a lot of people are saying, hey, Pokemon, you got to sue them. You got to get take them out. I've seen thousands of ripoffs of games before that have changed some things. And most of the time when a game is not good, like the <laughs> the last of us ripoff, the days gone, whatever you want to call it, the they they were a scam, right? So they basically made a last of us ripoff and then they were found to be a scam, which is why everyone destroyed them for it. If Pal World was a scam, then everyone would say, destroy this company, destroy these devs. But the, the game itself is fun, and it's also like they're working to make this game better. So can you have a game that's similar to Pokemon and Digimon and Ark come out and just put it out in a world and it's fun to enjoy? And, <clears throat> and maybe, just maybe, Game Freak will get their heads out of their ass and actually make a Pokemon game that is as fun as Pal World? Maybe they will. But to say that Pokemon should be suing them, if they could sue them, knowing Nintendo, they would have done it already. Like that's my that they would have already sued them. Right? It already the letter would have already been handed to them. It would have been already in the books. 
Um, Angelica, what is your your take on this Pal World as a Pokemon ripoff? Yeah, I think two things can be true at once. Um, I do think Power World has gotten at least unfair criticism when it comes to AI. I, I know a lot of people are throwing that this game was made AI by like generated game, and I think that's kind of unfair to uh, kind of throw that claim on this group without evidence. Um, and I do think that they have done enough, like I said in the beginning, to separate itself from a Pokemon game. I actually think they do way more gameplay of Ark than they do of Pokemon. But with that said, I don't think they can get in legal trouble with what they've done, but they are getting very close to the line when it gets to the models of the PALs versus Pokemon. I mean, I'm not a 3D artist expert, but damn, some of the models are almost one to one with some of them, and they have gotten real close to the line. Now, I don't think anything's going to become of this because, you know, Power Worlds has been in development publicly for the last three years, and Nintendo is very notorious for coming hard on anyone who even speaks the word Pokemon that is not under their jurisdiction. I mean, someone tried to make a mod for this game with Pokemon added into PAL Worlds, and it was shut down by Nintendo in less than 24 hours. So you know that they're eyeing on this. Um, there are also two Japanese companies. So if PAL Worlds was a United States company and Nintendo you know, in Japan, the fair use laws are very different with two Japanese companies compared to one in the United States and one not. So I don't know. Again, I'm not a, a, a copy infringement uh, type of attorney. So, you know, to me, I just feel like there is a lot more obstacles. And I feel like Nintendo and Pokemon Company are obviously aware, but I don't think they have enough that they feel is like a slam dunk. Haki, is this a Pokemon ripoff? Yeah, so I'm going to just be straightforward. I think the core of this game is a Pokemon ripoff. I think, uh, you know, the pals, I mean, a lot of the pals look almost exactly like Pokemon. Um, and, but, but what they put around it, like, like Marshall, what you were saying, the, the building, the guns and everything, what they put around it is not a Pokemon ripoff. So, you know, can they get away with it? You know, they might be able to, but I think, I think they're going to have a problem. I, I already saw some, some things about Nintendo saying they're looking into it, like an official statement I, I had saw. So the Pokemon you know, company. Yeah, they're two yeah, different companies. Yeah, yeah, excuse me, the, the, the Pokemon company. Not, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I, I did see that. But like I said, it's there's a lot of difference in it, but I, I think the core is is pretty much a Pokemon ripoff. Lawyer guy, is this a Pokemon ripoff? All right, so I'm going to preface this with, this is not legal advice, right? I'm going to go with my <laughs> gut. I've done zero research. So I think if Pokemon had a monopoly on collecting non-humans and fighting those non-humans, then this would be a ripoff. But I don't think that Pokemon has that kind of monopoly. In other words, a game can can think of an idea of, you know, hey, let's get these non-human creatures to be our friends and we'll, you know, and we'll go off on an adventure, you know? Um, a lot of the elements, I mean, literal elements like fire, water, rock, grass, those are physical things in the world that, you know, Pokemon can't claim a right to. Um, they're very close especially with the images. I think maybe the images of the creatures probably the, the closest that they're getting to a problem, you know, a ripoff problem. But look, I don't even think that they, I, I don't know much about the plot. This is just a beta, but I don't even think they rip off the Pokemon plot as a whole. Um, so I, I don't think that it's a rip off. I think it's very close. I think what me and 8 million other people got on the game for was because someone said, yo, this is like a Pokemon game with guns <laughs> for sure. But, uh, I, I don't want to say it's a ripoff, you know? It's close, but not a ripoff. The devs got to stop using Pokemon with guns, though. Like, <laughs> if you yeah, want to yeah. distinguish yourself, yeah. stop saying that. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I for think sure. You sold, they've, they've sold enough yeah. money at this, sold enough units at this point that they don't have to necessarily even call themselves Pokemon with guns. I feel like they could just, they, they've sold more games than a lot of other exclusives to certain consoles. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. it, they, they have the right to be like, we're, we're Power World. Like, this is our game. We made this. And the more you clean yourself to Pokemon, people are going to start saying yes. And great, there's a lot of memes, jokes out there. And sure, you know, I, I can definitely look at one and be like, I can make a connection to a Pokemon I played in the past um, for sure. But at the same time, like these are unique in their own way to a certain extent. Like, and I feel like that is kind of a big difference. Now, with that being said, we have to jump to our final verdict. And I want to get our official grade of what we would rank this as well as whether or not you should buy this now later or not at all. And so when I look when I look at Power World myself, I think of the core concept of is this fun to play, and especially for the price that you're getting it for. 
And when I look at the two components, yes, there are a lot of issues when it comes to bugs that this early access game has. But just at its basic core of what they were able to accomplish at 60% of its game complete, essentially, this is what the devs came out and said. This is a very good game for what it is, right? You're, you're not, I'm not expecting this to be bringing me to tears of narrative storytelling or anything along those lines. Um, even with this being a buggy mess, there are still, it, it looks pretty good for console and for on, on PC, the way it plays and the basic mechanics work for the most part. And I think the plethora of different pals you can collect in the different regions, like, I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface on the amount of regions you can, you can go investigate. I mean, we played a decent amount, but there are many other people that have, have investigated different areas of terrain, right? And there's so much more to find in bosses to fight. And the fact that you're adding more makes this game feel like it's going to be kind of a long duration of play. And, you know, I'm not going to say this is a uh, early, early contender for game of the year or anything, but yeah, damn, crazy. they are buying. <laughs> there are so many games being sold from this that it's almost like that Animal Crossing effect where they just get so much love that it's like they get all the spotlight because of it. and so when i look at the grade i'm giving i'm probably going to give this closer to like an eight i feel like this game has that fun mentality and maybe it's be i'm being speaking too highly of it at the moment i think the game was is only going to get better so even if i were to go closer to a seven i think it still might even get to that 8.5 so i'm going to go in that middle way i'm going to go in eight because i feel like it is still very fun to play with what it has available to it and the more updates you add, the better the game's going to get. And I feel like that's what makes this kind of that Pokemon Arcanus sequel that we all wanted to see. Like, we wanted to see Pokemon reach this level of fun. And do you buy this now later on? I think you definitely buy this now. It is maximum $27 on sale. And then they have also like a 50% sale going for the rest of this month because of, they saw how much money was being made. That's going to get $17 is what the current i think the price is with the sale on and if you don't know there's also on game Pass, right so now you're having steam sales for 30 dollars max game pass availability the only downside is if you're not if you don't have a pc or xbox you're gonna have to get one of those to play it at the moment and i know right now dev said it's not they have no plans of putting it on playstation i'd be surprised if they don't because you're just gonna add more people to play the game but they're really making this more for PC at the point. But Xbox still has the capability of playing it, but I just think that they, they will add it in more places to go as time goes on. But I would definitely, if I were you, it's, it's a very fun game. I enjoyed it. I knew you guys all enjoyed it. Uh, Angelica, what is, what is your grade here? Yeah, I'll try to be uh, short about it. Um, I'm in between an average and a good game. So to me, in our scale, that's a 7.5. And I am at a buy now. I think the content that it provides at $30 um, is pretty extensive and they deserve a lot of credit. Again, there's not aspects of this game that is unbelievable, but the gameplay loop is satisfying and enjoyable. This is mindless fun is what we like to call it, where you're just playing and the hours just go by. Um, and when you put it down, you're like, Mm, do I want to play another hour of this? And you go back into it. So it, it really does a good job of hooking you in um, to this game. But with that said, there is major problems here. It's an early access game, so I am a little more lenient. But if this was a full release, it, I'd come down pretty harsh on the performance of this um, of this game. And for me, I don't like comparing it to big game studios because it's an indie game with a small dev group. But I just felt like I can't give it a higher grade because I played better indie games just last year, you know, doing some of the reviews for the channel um, that had a higher grade. So for me, it's a 7.5, but it is a buy now. Um, they do deserve a lot of praise for making a gameplay loop that is a lot of fun. Haki, what is your grade here? Yeah, so I always feel like I jumped the gun here with the grades, you know, giving Halo Infinite a top three, Halo, and, and saying, you know, Redfall is going to be amazing. Uh, but I truly see the potential in this game. I'm going to go right now standing as an 8.5 just because I've had a lot of fun playing it. I, you know, blew through a couple hours uh, with, with my brother, lawyer guy over there, uh, just catching pals, you know, again, not Pokemon, pals, um, you know, and facing bosses and just having fun building stuff and getting attacked. So I'm at an 8.5. I'm definitely a buy now for the price. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and if you have Game Pass, definitely download it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a cool game and I definitely see some really great potential. Laura guy, what's your grade? Listen, I had a $25 lunch today 
and I would have traded it for going out and slapping around some sheep pals or something, you know, and catching some big doofy looking, you know what I mean? So I want to give this, I'm going to double down on the 8.5 because I've lost some hours and I don't regret it. You know, like they were fun. Mindless fun is, is a great phrase for this. Um, yeah, 8.5, just had a good time. Um, again, beginning, you know, beginning with a basic game. I hope it, it gets a little bit better. I hope they fix the bugs because if they don't, this is definitely not an 8.5 as a finished product. But as the game is now, I would buy it now because it's a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's already sold 8 million units and more. It's going to be sold. It's only going to continue to get better. So I can guarantee more people will buy this thing. But what do you think about Pal World? Are you excited to jump in and catch some Poke? Oh, sorry, pals in the process of this entire uh, entire game and see how far it gets? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Till next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.